lesson from the brain, seeing the beauty through the... That right there is an example of movement. What is going on guys? My name is Spiral Tension and today this is a guide of how to movement in beam battles. Before I get started on this video, I'm just letting you guys know this isn't the content I typically make. I mean I haven't made content in a while, but I'm going to start making content on this game, Beam Battles. If you do not know what Beam Battles is, it is a third person battle royale where everybody is beans. And typically, I'm sort of into battle royales, like play them for like a week and get rid of it, but this game has been fun. And there's no catch, this game is only 50 cents on the Steam store, so go ahead and get it right away. Obviously, I am making this video out of my best interest, this is not any advertisement for anybody, I just love the community around this game. The gameplay you are seeing here is a 47 kill game I got on the map shipment. For everybody watching this, they know about the BBCL, they know this is not a BBCL recognized map, but... I did manage to get 47 kills on this map, and it shows a lot of great examples for what I'm talking about today, so hopefully you guys enjoy. Right now on the screen, there will be timestamps for the four different subjects I will be showing you. First, there's strafing and jumping. Second, there's timing. Third, there's height. And finally, the katana. And I know you guys playing beam battles are thinking, what does movement have to do anything with katana? But I am telling you now, it is the best thing to move around the map. Our first thing is strafing and jumping. Now you will see examples of the best clips I got from my game on the screen, so please pay attention to those as I am telling you about strafing and jumping. My first fight here seems to be with a guy on a shipment box. As you can see, I'm jumping around before I even snipe him, and we're running around the box and strafing when I fight him. When I'm jumping at the beginning of the clip, you can see the reason for that is so I'm not a target. As you can see, the only reason he's even standing there is trying to get a clear shot on me. But when I turn around and see him, I immediately start jumping and strafing. It makes my aim a little weaker, but he physically cannot hit me. I get a lucky shot and I tag him and he goes down. This is bad for him, we can talk more about this in the height section later. So as he retreats back into the box, this is my time to strike. I'm going, and when I meet up with him, I'm strafing right, left, right. If you don't know what the word strafe means, it's basically your A and your D buttons on your keyboard. You're moving left and right, so it's harder for the enemy to hit you. Now the second clip here is your typical gunfight. I'm strafing only a little bit to keep my aim, but I am jumping to kind of scare him and push him back. At the same time, he cannot aim at me. And if he can, it's really hard for him to do so. He takes my health down a lot, but I'm still in the fight. Then I skip a little bit in the clip, but then I go fast onto those containers. What I'm doing here is I'm jumping onto the containers fast, trying to get as much speed as possible. I see the guy, I land another lucky sniper shot. This forces him to retreat, which means I push up fast. I'm jumping while I do it, so just in case if he pushes out, he does not have a clear line of shot on But fortunately though, I jump and I strafe and I get the kill and I win that round. Strafing and jumping is mainly helping you with surviving. It's not really more lasting the game, it's more about surviving one-on-one -on -one gunfights. Now moving from strafing and jumping, we are going on to timing. As you can see in the clip here, I charge this guy pretty well, but then I realize I take a shot from the back. I'm low health, 9, what do I do inside of here? I see him, I corner peek him, and the right thing I do is back off. And then I peer around the other side, bam, take him out. So what was going inside of my head when I saw the second guy? What I knew is that I had low health, so whatever I needed to do, it had to be a miracle. 9 health is not a lot to work with. So what I do is I take a couple of shots, unexpectedly poking out at him, and then I back up using that door. Then I rotate around the container, I take a couple of seconds to wait to shoot my shots. The reason for this is if I shoot too early, he'll have enough time to hide behind it again and get an easy shot on me. I want this to be the element of surprise. So I wait a couple seconds, light him up, and he is so confused, he doesn't know what to do. The most important part of timing though is called third beaning. That is the name the community sort of came up for. This is third party basically in any other game. What I do in this next clip is simple. When two players are low on their health, I walk in on their fight and take shots at both of them, trying to get both kills but at least making sure that they're both dead by the end of it. This can be risky because you do not want to be caught in the middle of this. Make sure you stay a little bit farther away and just take shots from a distance. Yeah. 
Height is absolute king in beam battles. Your objective is to be higher than your opponent. You can catch them off guard and you have an easier way to kill them. In this clip here, I catch this opponent completely off guard, jumping on top of the crate and jumping down at him. Simple enough, it's easy explainable. Finally, we are on to the katana. Thanks to my friends BBQ and Gordo for this clip. Basically, my friend BBQ is on a roof here and I'm trying to fight him. He moves so fast with the katana that he kills me and I don't even know how. And then with Gordo, Gordo can't seem to aim at him either. He's just slicing through everybody. It seems like he's almost unhittable which is sort of true when the katana is being used. The katana is a speed demon. In the background, I'll be showing clips of the katana, not really anything specific except for one thing I'll be talking about. And that thing is called Tarzaning. Yes, I know it sounds weird, but in the map Campout, and even in the other map too, you can Tarzan. What a Tarzan is, is climbing through trees to find an opponent. Not only is this used to find an opponent, it's also to hide from opponents. You're moving so fast in these trees that you basically look like Tarzan. This helps when you're fighting against opponents, trying to get into the ring. Also, when you're fighting opponents, just catching them off guard, moving so fast in the trees. But Tarzaning brings up one major thing with a katana. It's so damn fast. Almost untouchable, you can get around the map in seconds with this thing. Its cooldown really doesn't limit this machine. Just trust me, use the katana. And that is going to be a wrap on this guide on how to movement and be in battles. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really enjoy this game. I know a lot of you out there do too. If you have not bought this game already, please do. It is such a fun game. If you guys would like more Bean Battles guides, please let me know down in the comments or even on Discord. If you guys are in the Bean Battles Discord, please join it and please give me your suggestions. And without any further ado, my name is Spiral T and I'll see y'all on the other side. Peace out, everybody.